Now there are two main methods of interfacing with AutoCAD, the mouse and the keyboard. Many users will use the mouse almost exclusively, using the keyboard only when it is unavoidable. However, I have found in my years that the key to efficiency in working in AutoCAD is to take advantage of as many tools as you possibly can. That includes the keyboard. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a gray area with a couple of lines. This is called the command line. That's right here. Here you can type in any command into AutoCAD. In this video series, I will often say type on the command line or type in the command. This is where you would type it in. Not only can you execute commands through the command line, but AutoCAD will give you feedback through that area. Now, many commands have options to them as well. Now, those options will appear on the command line. For example, the circle command. So I type in the word circle to start the command, and then I press enter. Now I get a couple of instructions on here. It's telling me to specify the center point for the circle. That means I'm starting the circle. Also, you'll see here, and they're highlighted in gray, and they're drawn in blue. I have a 3P, 2P, a TTR, and then that's it. Now you can see as I move in the command line, they're highlighted. Now it used to be where you had to just manually type these commands in, but now I can click on them in the command line. Now these are different options. You'll see the little bracket, and then these highlighted blue text areas closed by the bracket. These are options. These are the options that I'm talking about. Now, as I'm typing in here, did you notice by my crosshairs, there's this area where the text showed up. If I press escape to get out of the command and I start typing in circle again, you'll see it shows up right by my crosshairs. Well, this is called the dynamic input tool. This is a visual aid. It's intended to help the drafter's efficiency. It puts the command line at your crosshairs where you're already looking at anyway to do your drawing with. It does this so that you don't have to keep moving your eyes from the crosshair to the command line and back again. Now, it may not sound like much, but this can help prevent some headaches too. And it does save some time. If I have to look from my crosshairs to my command line, back up to my crosshairs every time I do a command, that's, you know, half a second of time, but I'm doing, you know, multiple commands, you know, 10, 20 commands a minute possibly, that adds up. So it can save you some time. And trust me, it does ease up on the eye strain only looking in one spot, or at least limiting the amount of traveling your eyes have to do on the screen. Also, if you're good at typing, you can type in the word circle without moving your eyes to look at your keys. So imagine if you have to look at the crosshair to start the circle to know where you're at, look at the command line, look at the keys, look at the command line, look at the crosshairs. That's a lot of looking. So dynamic input can be very helpful for you. And press escape to get out of there and show you another way here that you can enter commands on the command line and that's through keyboard shortcuts. All commands can be executed by typing on the command line but most commands have a keyboard shortcut. For example circle. If I type in the word circle you say okay that's not too bad but this is even better. If I just type in the letter C press enter I'm starting the circle command that's even shorter. Yeah, it's only a few keystrokes, but again, if I'm drawing a hundred circles and it takes one, two, three, four, five, six keystrokes times a hundred, that's 600 keystrokes. Or I just type in the letter C, that's 100 keystrokes. So that's a huge reduction in time and in use, so it increases your efficiency quite a bit. So keep that in mind. So here are a few more tips that I want to show you about the command line. If I press the F2 button, that brings up the command line. This will allow you to see what you've been doing. Press F2 and it goes away again. And here's another one. With your dynamic input turned on, press the C button, and you'll see here that it is automatically populating different commands that start with the letter C. Now, AutoCAD has become very smart this way. It will show you these commands and it will learn your commands. Right now there are a lot of different choices. But if I use the copy command, typing CO, it will automatically eventually start putting copy at the top of my list and not circle. So that's something that can be very useful for you. And as you type in the letter C, if I say, oh, I want change properties or I want the combine command or copy, I can come through here and left click it to start that command. I don't have to keep typing. So if you have something like extract data or the data extraction command, I can start typing that in. Also, you notice the command is data extraction and I typed in EXTRA like for extraction, well, it's smart enough to know that's part of the command name. So if you don't know what a command is, but you kind of have a good idea, you can start typing that in and it will automatically bring that command up for you in that list, which is really good. For my last tip in this section, I'm going to show you this really cool trick with your arrow keys. 
if you press them up or down, it will scroll through your last commands. Now this is very handy if you're using the same couple of commands over and over again, especially if they're difficult to get to. You just push the up arrow and it will go up the list. Push the down arrow and it will go down the list. So when you want to get to one of those, you find it where it is here in the list. Then press enter and it starts that command. Now in this case, it was my rectangle command. Now the real key to AutoCAD efficiency is doing less work. The less you have to do, the quicker you get done. Type less, draw more, finish the project. 